Once upon a time, there was a holiday Barbie who hated Christmas. The fates that be disapproved of this, so they cursed her to spend the holiday season as a human. And a human she would stay until she learned the true meaning of Christmas. How did this happen? Well, Barbie, it was actually a trick of editing. Oh, so anyway, I went to I went to Walmart this year and I saw Holiday Barbie and I was like, finally, something good came out of 2020. I determined I would make it for myself, so I began by making a rough sketch and then cleaned up the sketch and made my final masterpiece. Then it was time to... Now it is time to make a mock-up. When making a mock-up, you want to use a cheap fabric that you have a lot of. For instance, I used poly satin, not to be confused with regular satin, and also not to be confused with Satan, because as you may recall, Satan... Satan is really bad. Now I'll admit I got carried away making the mock-up and did add some things that I didn't plan to incorporate in the final dress, like a completely different silhouette, but I was enjoying myself. What's that? Smells like this mock-up is on fire. Oh, false alarm. It was actually a real fire. Now that's what I call a barbecue. Okay, now let's try on our practice garment. Ta-da! Oh no, did I turn myself into Marilyn Monroe from Gentlemen Prefer Blondes again? You know, the movie where she sings, Diamonds are a girl's best friend. Oh, am I kidding? I'm not nearly as glamorous as her. I don't own any real diamonds. I don't even look like I could feasibly own a diamond. And you know why? It's these puny eyelashes. They're a joke. It's a good thing this video is sponsored by Glamnetic Lashes. Glamnetic Lashes are perfect for girls who aren't good at putting on lashes or just don't want to mess around with messy, toxic glue. Because if you think about it, putting glue on your eye does not sound like something a preschooler would do. We're adults. It's time to start acting like it. Say it with me. No more glue. No more glue. No more glue. Stop acting like a kindergartner. Because you know who's not a kindergartner? Doja Cat. She wore Glamnetic lashes, posted about it to Instagram. So did India Love. They're adults. Are you an adult? Prove it. Buy Glamnetic. Do it. You won't. They come with this magnetic lash case for easy storage. Or if you have a giant magnetic bar, you can store them on that too. I like, I actually like the case better. Glamnetic's magnetic liner is paraben free. And parabens are, I think those stories that Jesus would tell. Let me just... Parables. Those are parables. I was close. Parabens, though. I don't exactly know what they are, but they sound like nasty little creatures. I imagine them to look something like this. Good thing this doesn't have any of those in it. Glamnetic has the world's first six magnet lashes for maximum hold, but don't worry. The magnetic force isn't so strong that it'll cause pins and needles and cookware to fly across the room at your eyes. No, I was worried about that too, but six magnets is just right. They also carry the world's first colored lashes. I love a first. Here's a picture of me on my first birthday. I was pretty cute, but I would've looked a lot cuter if glamnetic lashes existed. Am I right? I guess I'll have to make up for last time starting now. First, I'm gonna go in with this jet black Marilyn Monroe eyeliner. Now, just for funsies, I'm going to do a thin line over it with this pink liner so I can look like a flamingo. You know, when my dad told me to stop impersonating flamingos, I had to put my foot down. I've heard that applying a one-liner while applying your liner makes it work better. It really isn't a flamingo pink liner, though. It's a bit more of a watermelon pink. And you know what they say, when life gives you melons, you might be dyslexic. Which I am, so I can say that. I guess the actual name of this liner is Pink Ruby, which I actually don't have a joke about. It's actually a very nice name. Now for the lashes, we're going to be using the ones named Brat, which I love the style of, but if the name's too edgy for you, worry not. They have over 30 styles of rashes. Brat lashes, ranging from breathy, natural, just woke up like this, to bougie, glamorous lashes so long I can't see my haters. Now this is how they look fresh out of the packet. I've never opened them. I lied. I've actually been wearing them a bunch, but they look brand new. That's simple. It's that difference though, which I looks more glamorously shocked. The most important thing, in my opinion, is the fact that you can rewear these over and over for a strong all day hold that's reusable. Take it from me, someone who's gone to Walmart week after week getting cheap, disposable lashes. You don't want to go to Walmart right now. It's a madhouse there, a jungle. Save yourself. Get Glamnetic and see. If you would like to try these babies out, follow the link in my description. Then slap the old keyboard till it says Makara for 20% off site wide. Also, if you follow my link and use my name, it'll make them think I'm popular, and I do want them to think I'm popular. Now let's try this again. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. So much more believable now. Now back to the dress that I haven't even started. I learned something a couple years ago when I modeled my last holiday Barbie dress, and that is December in Ohio. It's it's not warm, not warm at all. We can't do anything about the fact that this is a sleeveless dress, but we are going to line the bodice with three layers of fabric, and one of them will be flannel. When cutting up a friend's bed sheet to drape my bodice, I looked very closely at the doll, trying to make mine as similar as possible to hers. Now to be extra cute and festive, instead of tracing this onto pattern paper, we're going to trace it onto Christmas wrapping paper. <laughs> Voila! Gosh, that is so tacky, but just about everything about Christmas is. Now we're going to trace this onto our outer fabric on the fold, and oh my gosh, it is a stinking winter waking nightmare out there. Just kidding, it's actually kind of very beautiful. Gary, you want to see snow for the first time? I'll take that as a yes. What do you think? You like it? Like it? Yeah, I kind of hate it too. I could use a nice warm shower. How about you? 
I left my miniature eagle by a heating vent to dry, then got back to work. Okay, I'm back. Okay, so I tried to pull a fast one on you guys. I really didn't take a shower in that moment. I, obviously, Garyon's on my shoulder. You can tell I was like, I'll just edit it and make it look like I took a shower, but yeah, I failed. The shower was taken later. Also, just so you know, when it's cold out, I don't let Garyon out of the house for more than like 10 seconds. Oakley dokley, let's try this on you, Stasia. Uh, okay, that's not gonna work. This pattern is just not compatible with this fabric. How do you make a long bodice with just these darts without any puckering? I think we need to open this baby up. Opening up a Barbie has got to be one of the best feelings in the world, tied of course with removing unwanted hairs and a cool raw egg running down your throat. Anyway, something I still regret is last time I did the holiday Barbie thing, I didn't buy that actual doll because at the time I felt like I couldn't afford it and I really wish that I had. One, because it would have been a nice memento to have and two, because it, I think it would have helped with a lot of construction issues. I think I figured out what the problem is. We don't have the same body type. My waist is actually like 22 inches wider than hers. I'm gonna have to improvise. And so it was back to the drawing board, or rather draping board. This time I began draping with the lame to make sure it would hang perfectly. I deduced that the key to reducing puckering and wrinkling was to make the bodice out of two separate pieces. And that gap you see there is not a window for your precious little belly button. You're gonna have to sew it shut. And speaking of belly buttons though, I heard a rumor recently that Germans all have Audis. Is that true? Audi? Sorry, that joke was the worst. Well, no, actually, a joke about German sausage would be the worst. Though I don't know why I singled out German sausage. It could be sausage from anywhere. I actually hear most sausage is made in Greece. Grease, grease. Sorry, I don't know what these jokes have to do with anything. I'm supposed to be talking about a dress. Speaking of dress, though, if you dressed as a sausage for trick or treat, you'd be a Halloweener. So here's the thing about procrastination. It doesn't always make sense. For instance, I have now finished two whole dresses to avoid working on one. But now, now that I have something cute to wear while working on it, I'm going to work on my holiday Barbie dress. Or I could, I have enough fabric to make another dress exactly like this. And how cool would that be to have two of the same dress? Okay, I'll work on the holiday Barbie. As I mentioned, my dress was going to be constructed out of three layers, so I started with the bottom two layers, adding boning into those. And by boning, I mean zip ties, the really big, thick kind that you would use if you were going to kidnap someone. Then I sewed the top layer onto that, inside out, sewed it together along the neckline, then flipped it right side out, then traced that to create the back. And now, due to me making some mistakes, we have this much fabric to make our skirt, which I think we can make it work with a little bit of, uh, shopping. Now for the sleeves. We're going to want to trace something that is sort of like a big semicircle, like half of a plate or... The filter for your ring light. Sorry, Trace your semicircle, then cut out a little duck foot sized nook. Then repeat that process eternally. And while we do that, I could answer some Christmas themed fact quiz about me. Fact one number one How can you be a Christian and not like Christmas? Isn't that illegal? Isn't it Jesus' birthday? Well, I actually do love Jesus, but we don't know when his birthday actually was. There's just as much chance of it being Christmas as any other day, so I'd say that means there's like a 1 in 265 chance that. One and you get it. Fact one number two. Why don't you like Christmas? Well, this might get serious for a second. Could be really awkward. Growing up, Christmas was kind of all about my grandma. It was the day we went to grandma's house. She is what made it Christmas. So since she died, it's kind of just a yearly reminder of her absence. Also, red and green look horrendous together. Christmas music, with the exception of Wham's Last Christmas and Police Navi Dodd, is horrible. Now, perhaps most telling of all in regards to my disdain for Christmas, I used to work retail. I loved my coworkers and I mostly loved my customers, but this thing happened at Christmas time. Middle-aged women are kind of like Christmas werewolves. There's a monster inside of some of them that only comes out at Christmas time when they can't find the exact holly frosted garland they're looking for. At Hobby Lobby, the Christmas stuff starts coming in in like June to be sorted. Have you ever heard of glitter lung? I coined the term. It's this thing that happens after months of sweeping up pure glitter and it just... Oh, but I thought of a better one. What happens when you inhale too many Christmas decorations? You get tensilitis. Also, Christmas trees have to be kept upstairs, so we have to carry them all, hundreds of Christmas trees upstairs, and then when somebody wants one, we have to go upstairs, get the Christmas tree, bring it back down, bring it to the front, smile, hand it to them, and then by the time we're there, somebody else wants a Christmas tree. And here's what I don't understand. Why do so many Christmas trees get bought? You know they're not disposable, right? Artificial trees, the, the whole point of them. The whole point is so that they can be reused year after year, right? So why am I seeing the same people come back year after year for more trees? Where do all these trees end up? Did you lose it? Is it lost? That's why I keep my tree up year round so I don't lose it. Brings me to the next FACWA. Why have I had my Christmas tree up for eight years straight? Well, that is a question I've been meaning to answer for like every video the past two years. And oh my gosh, we are out of fabric. But here's the thing. I know nobody likes a negative Nelly, a Debbie Downer, or a sad Sally, a morose Makara, if you will. So I'm gonna try to be festive. I'm gonna try to change. I believe that change is possible. I once knew somebody who was addicted to Hokey Pokey, but they turned themselves around. So while I'm at the store, I'm going to get some Christmas... <laughs> some Christmas... <laughs> Christmas... <laughs> decorations. Let's go to Obby Lobby! I wasn't doing a weird accent, it's Obby Lobby. 
So the Christmas aisle puts me in one of two modes. This is the first one, and I call it the melting position. Then there's the retail-related PTSD that causes me to fervently start resetting the shelves like they're supposed to be set. Must cover all the diamonds. <laughs> now, to be fair to the Christmas season, the Christmas items weren't the only items in this store that I found very exhausting to look at. Why does this exist? Is it just me, or is the products surrounding motivation culture just going a little bit haywire yes. lately? Motivation. Anyway, I had this beautiful, wonderful star of a woman cut me some fabric, and then I went home. Now I'm gonna spray this expensive expensive fake snow onto this expensive fake plant, even though the snow and plants are free when they're real, but it's fitting because this is the most illogical time of the year. Oh, I can make like an old Hollywood glam costume out of this. Hi, I'm Judy Garland. <laughs> <laughs> With this extra, I'm gonna do like a, I don't know, does that make sense? None of this makes sense. That looks like a thing. Wow. Why am I knocking for someone in there? And now I want to see my dad and friend's reaction to the fact that I decorated for Christmas. Booba dooba. Christmasy. Okay, can you look around and pretend you're surprised? What did you do? Knocked over a thing of pins that you had sitting there. Wow, did somebody decorate for Christmas? I'm shook it! <laughs> She's shaking so hard. Is this a Christmas tree? Are you in the Christmas spirit? Aww. Okay, honestly, this is kind of pretty. The Grinch's small heart. No, that's this isn't. That is not what this is. That day. Oh, ah. oh, 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 oh
cooled down. After removing all the pins, it was finally time for... Did you want to be in the shot? Me? Yeah. Well, I found this rather interesting. Probably doesn't make much sense, does it? Unfortunately, it makes a lot of sense. devastating accident, the human Barbie returned to the jungle that is Walmart. While there, she was drawn to an aisle where she felt a sense of belonging, and she was reunited with her long-lost sisters. What are you guys up to? Just shopping, hanging out. I'm the holiday Barbie. Yeah. I love the dress. And so Barbie and her replacement sister lived happily ever- Oh wait, there was one more thing I wanted to show you. Coming down. because I can literally light up my own path. And here's where we end with the annual Dad Kara Christmas photo. Easy, easy. Oh hey there, I know it's unusual for me to do a voiceover at the end of the video, but I just had to say